But that makes a lot of sense, though. You definitely have to be way more focused and, and get it done, you know, especially right now. It's not the time. Even from the carrier side, it's not the time to, you know, just relax and chill. You got to do things that other carriers are not willing to do. You got to show up early to work. You got to book loads before, you know, before anybody else. You got to work after hours. You know, I, I feel like you got to go above and beyond just to, like, you know, make it happen. So you, then, you definitely got a good point. Yeah, my name is Justin Banks. I'm the managing director for Sunset Transportation's St. Louis branch. I've been with the organization for just over 11 years. Um, this is the fourth position that I've held at Sunset. I've managed managed our St. Louis branch for about four and a half years now. Um, when I took over, um, the organization had 35 operational personnel, and we just hit 95 last week. Oh, wow. Um, okay. I, my name is Scott Brillhammer. I am the brokerage manager here in the St. Louis office. Um, that's our corporate office where I would say 50 or 60% of the employees are at. Um, I started as a um, account manager, kind of entry level on the customer facing side and worked my way up. Um, we both have some experience with some other brokerages. I've worked at JB Hunt and Worldwide Express. You were at Echo? Yeah, I started at Echo. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, back I graduated college in 2010, um, back when the economy was just awful. Um, took a job up at Echo, living on a buddy's couch, making no money. In Chicago? Oh, wow. Chicago, yep. Oh, wow. Um, I think we have some mutual connections. I'm sure we do. Um, <laughs> you know, part of the Echo 3, um, you know, they, they taught me well. They trained me well. Um, I tell the story of... I do a lot of our, 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 or have done a lot of our hiring. Um, so I do a St. Louis branch overview. I tell everybody, the only reason I'm sitting here talking um, to them and to you gentlemen here today is because I took that opportunity. I took that chance. Um, I knew nothing about logistics. I knew nothing about anything. Um, just a 22 year old punk kid looking to make a dollar. Um, and about 13, 14 years later, now I have a career. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's awesome. And just to get some context to the listeners, uh, and uh, Bobby, you don't know this. I didn't tell you about this. Like back in November, I wrote like an article about like the top rated freight brokerages. Uh, so like what I, what we did was we went through the transfertopics.com each year, kind of like cr they uh, put out like the top hundred largest freight brokerages by revenue in the U.S. And so like I go on that list and I'm like, all right. I'm wondering which of these companies has like the best Google reviews. Cause like, obviously for the most part, brokerages have bad Google review, reviews. <laughs> and so, so transportation, I think was either one number one or number two on that list of like the highest rated, uh, you know, freight brokerages via Google reviews. And you know, that drivers and, and carriers typically give a bad review on Google uh, if there's right. an issue. So there's something, you know, there showing that, Sunset actually has, you know, good service, not only for the customer side, but also for the carrier side, which isn't that, you know, I guess prevalent in our industry. So that when I put out that article, kind of like I put it out on LinkedIn, it got a ton of reposts, a lot of likes and uh, Casey, the marketing uh, director who we just saw beforehand on camera reached out to me and we've been kind of talking ever since to get the setup. So that's kind of like the context of how we all got together. And uh, I definitely want to talk about how like Sunset Transportation has, you know, like a boatload of good reviews on, on Google. There's there's a reason behind it. And I kind of want to find how out. Did you yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Bob. How did you guys swindle the drivers to give you good reviews? <laughs> That's the main question. <laughs> well, it, it's know? definitely financial. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not afraid to buy votes. Uh, I'm kidding, guys. It, like, it, <laughs> I was asking Casey before this too, like um, you've kind of just got a couple of guys who've just grown up in the industry, man. Um, you know, we, we've got no, we've got no training. We're not going to be super polished at all. Um, if it's okay, we probably laugh and joke a, a, a little bit. And, and I imagine we will probably tell you when there's a joke that there's a joke, 
But if you ever, if you need a serious answer, man, just make sure that you ask for that. But we uh, kind of imagined it was going to be relatively lighthearted and we could just have some fun with each other. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. Um, I mean, so if we want to go right ahead, uh, Bob, uh, Bob owns a trucking company in North Carolina. And uh, I guess, Bob, what are your like deepest, like most concerned, like what, what kind of questions would you really want an answer to from someone that runs a brokerage uh, from the carrier side and the customer side? Uh, what would you really want to know? I mean, there, there's a lot of questions and just, I, I don't know anything kind of, well, I do know a little bit like the broker side, how it works, but I don't really, you know, like kind of know how, like, how do you guys get the customers or like, how do you keep the good relationships with the drivers or with the carriers is like my, my main question would be like, do carriers actually matter during like up and down times? Is there a relationship? Do you guys see it from your side? Is there a relationship where it's like, okay, even though right now we can book this with, you know, a different carrier, but since this carrier was with us for the last two years, we'll give him this load at the, you know, the, the load prices that it was like a year ago or two years ago. Like that, that would be kind of a main question. Yeah. So from my side, I deal with a lot of the, the brokerage accounts and know that business isn't guaranteed. You know, I'm fine for that each day. Um, we do have some contractual rates in my department, but a lot of time each day is you know, a new battle. Um, what I tell a lot of the guys that I've been working with or people deal with the carriers is, you know, be fair. If the carriers that, you know, held um, the rate during the, the tough times for the for the shipper side, you know, maybe we don't give them the full amount of volume, but help them out. Give them two or three, you know, slightly above market rate. If market's 15, your guys that were with you in the, the tough times, you can pay them 17 um, or, or a little bit more. Now, I'm not saying they get every one of our loads at that amount, but I'm okay to overpay on one or two of them. And then the other, you know, yeah. three or four cover at that market percentage. Keep... Um, you know them even better. And as far as the, if the maybe the foundation of the question, um, Bob, the carriers matter. Yes, emphatically yes. At Sunset, they absolutely do. Um, we are a, a organization um, that prides itself on integrity, and we want to do what's right. Um, we understand that as a, a third party, we are nothing without our customers. We're nothing without our carriers. If we only have one of yeah. those partners and one of those two transactions, then we don't exist at all. So there is a bit of, of a balance. Um, so when when you talk about, or Scott, Scott kind of mentioned the brokerage customers, we've got customers of all different customer commitment level here at Sunset. We've got customers who we own and manage their entire book of business. Um, we've got other customers who we fight for and quote and win and earn shipments every day from those customers. Um, we have expedite customers, we have project-based customers. So one of the things that I, we'll probably get into at a, a bit of a later time here, and, and you kind of mentioned it, was how do we acquire customers? Um, but we have customers of all different sizes, all different commitment levels. So the carrier basis that we fit into those customer commitment levels are generally driven by that customer's rate structure and agreement to sunset. So if you have, or if we have business that we're able to do on a contractual basis, we're fair to each other, we're providing each other high level of service and communication, there's no reason for, for us to want to come in and drop rates unless you, the carrier, increases your rate or you have service issues and we have to replace the carrier based off of us, based off of service issues. So kind of a little bit of long-winded answer, Bob, is we have very, very good carrier relationships. We measure and monitor um, all of our carrier sales reps load to carrier ratios. So that way we're not too transactional on business that we need to be contractual on. And we're not too contractual on orders that we should be transactional on. Hope that makes sense. Uh, made sense for me. Uh, Bob, I see you're thinking over there. What are you thinking <laughs> yeah. about? Uh, I'm just, it, it was kind of a little bit of like, I kind of get it, but it kind of a little bit of confusing, but I'm, it, it takes me a minute to understand it. You know, I feel like so. Yeah. It's different for Bob because he wasn't like a broker ever. And like, I was a freight broker for six years. So I get that. But I, I, don't, I also get Bob, like where you're coming from, because it's, it's a little bit different. And I, I feel like what we try to do, especially in the podcast is kind of like 
we we try to like have trucking companies better understand brokerages and then kind of like also the reverse where brokerages could better understand trucking companies, you know, where we're both coming from. The other thing yeah. that I do when I'm, when I'm, you know, trying to target new customers is I always tell the customer, you know, typically you find the customer of the load and then you go find a truck to do the load for you. I try to do the reverse. You know, if I like working with Bob and he's, his company's good and I trust the service he does, I will go to Bob and say, Bob, what lanes do you like to run? What areas do you get into? And I'll go target customers in that area because I know I have a carrier that can back it up. I already know his rate and, and stuff like that. So we'll partner with carriers before we even have the business. Oh, um, oh that's smart. I've heard of that yeah. before. Like I just I never really yeah. knew because that's like it takes it's a longer process to actually get that done. And obviously some carriers might give you a price and no shipper, you know, might actually be willing to pay. So like I feel like there's there's definitely like a longer process in, in developing that relationship and finding those shippers can you tell us more about that like like of like the success that you've seen and how, how it's been like helpful in like the development of the book absolutely so if we if we reach out to you know bob your company and have a rp you know customer wants contracted rates for three months six months year whatever we'll give you know yeah. our, here's all the outbound charlotte lanes bob tell me know what you get and this is what bob needs to run I feel like Bob's more likely to hold that rate for the year because I he was part of the process. He could have picked sure. any rate yeah. he wanted. And I'll give him the feedback. Hey, round one came back. We're a little high here. Can you come down at all? He Now he's invested. He's spent just as much time as I have. It's a partnership. We're going to win or lose together. I'd rather work with him than someone who I don't know their service levels. Definitely. Um, so that's smart. That's actually what I'm looking for. No joke. <laughs> you guys can find me something out of Charlotte. The funny thing is, I, I've so I, I don't really like dispatch day to day. I mean, I do it sometimes, but I've 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 heard of Sunset. I'm sure I have, and we do work with Sunset. And then actually, my coworker, he actually just booked a load with you guys, and he actually said really good things about you. He's like, oh, you know, they actually paid really fair what the market was. And it was actually a good thing. So I'm like, hmm, this will be actually a pretty cool podcast, you know, to get you guys on and, and talk to you about it. But yeah, we actually just booked a load with you guys uh, uh, last week. I didn't even know that we were set up. But yeah, we were set up with you. We picked it up on um, the 17th. So That's cool. yeah. Um, and so another yeah. thing we talk about, you know, fair pay. We also talk about fast pay, um, you know, depending upon the size of organizations uh, or size of, of, of carriers that we work with, big or small. We understand the cash flow is important as well. So, you know, we've got multiple quick pay programs. Um, we've got, a, a, I'm not trying to turn this into a, 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 a sunset propaganda show or anything, guys. Um, but, you know, we pay all of our bills within 21 to 28 business days. You know, a couple of the questions here were, how do we, how do we keep carriers um, wanting to do business with us? And how do we incentivize carriers to do business with us? And it's just trying to do some of the little things sometimes to make sure that, that the carrier's cash flow doesn't get held up in certain loads or by by us being a, you know taking a long time to pay we want to pay yeah. you guys you guys provide us a high level of service we pay you quick that's that's how business relationships get built yeah, that's yeah. we do other stuff we just recently um started putting um driver parking on our raycons i know that's big for drivers if they can park there or not so as we find out if there's parking or not, we list that on the Raycon so they don't have to find out themselves when they get there. They don't have, you know, some carriers want to stop 30 miles short at the nearest rest area. Well, you don't have to. Oh, like, they... at, like at the shipper, the receiver? Yes. We'll tell wow. you that we're not parking on the, um, yeah. on the Raycon. So that's... So you guys go above and beyond because most, bro most brokers won't even care about that. You know what I'm saying? They'll just be like, whatever, let the driver sleep yeah. wherever he needs to sleep, so... Yeah, we have that's that's cool. Twenty four seven tracking in the building. Um, that's right here in the United States. So like, you're gonna get a live body. You're not gonna get good voicemail when you're you know stuck at midnight. You're gonna get a guy that's gonna have the answers. They have my cell phone, so I know it works. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. so, you know, this driver gets to pick up at midnight. No one's there. He, he doesn't feel like he's being neglected. He feels like he's yeah you know, has a place. He's gonna get um you know the issue resolved. Um. Sure. Which is awesome. just little things um, that we've, I feel like something does a good job of like just listening to the people we work with. Um, 
we were relatively small, four or five. We've had pretty explosive growth over the last five or six years. And uh, one of the things that we've done to continue to grow is listen to the people that's helped us get it there. We're not, you know, have a bunch of red tape saying, this is our way. We're not going to change. If someone has a, a good idea, let's try it, you know? Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. And I'm, I'm the just... same way. That's the, yeah, that's the smartest way to go, honestly, because feedback is the best kind of, I think the best kind of thing you can get because sometimes as, as a business, I mean, we're a small business, but I could like think one way, you know, but there could be so much better ideas or the driver can have a better idea or the dispatcher can have a better idea. And I could be thinking this way, you know, like that's the best way to do it. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, Scott and Justin, if you could like kind of like, give us more in depth about your, your over your growth, because you said there was explosive growth. Can you tell us like more or less what years that happened, like kind of go year by year. And then, uh, what was my other part? Uh, okay. If you could build on that. And then what kind of tips would you give to trucking companies right now, the downturn market in order to, you know, like get better paying loads, uh, you know, stay profitable. As we all know, there's a lot of trucking companies that are, that are struggling at the moment. Sure. So uh, speaking to um, <clears throat> the revenue and, uh, and the financial numbers of sunset, um, I am responsible for the St. Louis branch office which is uh, about 55% of the organization's overall revenue. Wow. Um, so oh, wow. last year, um, the company finished, um, I believe, at $350 million in revenue, and St. Louis Branch was 182. Um, the year before that, um, my group was 140 of, I believe, 200 and 296. Um, thank you, Casey, from the cheap seats. Um, <laughs> and the the year before that, my group was a hundred. So over the last three years, I went from a hundred to one hundred forty to one hundred eighty-two. Um, You're killing it. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you, man. I, I <clears throat> the group is killing it. Um, yeah. I am, I, I, I am only one person of many um, that support our customers and carriers. Um, and one of the cool things about us, man, is you're not going to hear us hardly, you know, to be anything but humble. The only thing that yeah. we are, we are who we are because of the people that are sitting next to us um, and wanting to take care of the people that support us. Uh, we're nothing without each other. Um, and we're we're just one big group that likes to work hard and likes to be successful. Mm. Um, you talked about how we got our business, too. I would say a lot of that's referrals, too. A lot of it's a customer knows the shipper that, you know, it's a lot of them coming to us. Yeah. Um, now, I'm not saying our outside sales team doesn't do anything because they do a tremendous job. Uh, but a lot of it's, you know, we get an account and it just kind of uh, snowballs into a lot bigger opportunity. That's an uh, interesting point, uh, Scott. I just want to build on that because uh, I guess a lot of people don't realize that like shippers ship between themselves. So like if you're doing good work for another shipper, they're going to refer you to another shipper. And I, I think a lot of people don't realize that. So I just, sorry if I interrupted you, Scott, you can go yeah. ahead. But and also, uh, we've had, we, we kind of talked about referrals there too, is when we have a good customer who turns over to another organization, our service level remains with the company that we were doing the business with. And then the customer contact that left brings us on to their business as well. So we just continue to grow through our internal customers turnover and and continuing to build off of those relationships by retaining business and then onboarding our new contacts business right yeah. yeah i mean yeah if you do good that the word definitely spreads that's what i noticed in our business too like if you treat drivers well right if you give them enough miles if they get enough like you know if they get treated right then they will refer their friends they will refer their family you know and it just like you can literally grow just from that you don't Sometimes you don't even need to advertise or try to find people because literally it's just word of mouth. And especially if you take care of, you know, the customer that you from your side or the shipper, it just kind of from our side. If you take care of, you know, the driver from our side, then guess what? You'll have other drivers willing to drive for you and work with you. So, yeah, that's that's awesome to hear that. Yeah, no, our, our mindset and, and our COO says it all the time. If you run a high class organization, customers will find you. And it's not. as yeah. old it's not as easy as that. Don't get me wrong, guys. We're simplifying a bit. But if you run a high-class operation, 
you will find customers and you will retain customers um, and they will want to continue to work with you. It's it's all about, you know, the internal competition, right? We want yeah. to be today than we were yesterday. That's all we care about, guys. All we can control is who we are today and who we're going to be tomorrow. Okay. So are you guys more focused on the relationships part of it or is, is it more because from what it sounds like, it is more of the relationship part of it instead of the number parts of it? Because I feel like there's so many, like you just mentioned, I don't know if I should say any names, but there's a lot of right brokerages that are studying right now that it's all online. You just go in there, you bid and it's numbers. And basically you don't even talk to any people. You know, we, you pick up the phone and you can't even reach anybody there. You, you have an issue with the load. You can't reach anybody there. So are you guys more focused on the relationship with the shippers, with the customers, or is it you guys are trying to, or like, I guess, is there a difference about it? I I mean, it's really dependent on the customer. Some customers, you know, they don't want to talk. They, they want to yeah. email and hide behind the load board. But the ones that will give you an ear, or, or that's how we kind of differentiate ourselves. If everyone's bidding the same $500, what's making them go with Sunset over another broker? It's that I'm going to yeah. call them. I'm going to tell them, hey, my, you know, I'm going to try to sell that I have Bob on the load and he's our best driver. He's done this load 15 times already. I'm trying to sell it. It's the same 500. They're going to spend yeah. that 500 regardless of who they go with, but they'd rather do with us because we're going to sell stuff that isn't just money. We're going to sell our communication, our um, visibility. We have a macro point on almost every load. Um, yeah. To kind of tag on to that, Scott. Um I like to say that technology supports our people as opposed mm -hmm. to organizations who their people support their technology. I believe and always have believed and will believe that this is a people business. This is a relationship type of business. And I yeah. believe we invest in the technology. Sunset's in, Sunset invests in the technology to support its people. Its people don't necessarily support the technology. Yeah. Yeah, and especially that makes a lot of sense. right now, and I, I, I'm also going to bring up this point where I, carriers don't realize this because they just think brokers are, you know, uh, putting down the rate, pulling the rates down. But it's like there's just as many brokers fighting for that shipper and that load as there are carriers fighting for that load from that broker. So yeah, the only way to differentiate yourself is a relationship, because at the end of the day, there's there's you know. Just number given them loads, but there's a lot of brokers, there's a lot of trucking companies. So you had to differentiate yourself with the relationship. And I'm also curious, um, what like makes up the like most of your business? Is there like a specific commodity or I know you mentioned expedited and we got a couple questions about expedited. So I'm wondering if is, is that like a main focus? Can you tell us more about uh who you try to you know go after? I know you're more or less gonna do most freight shipments, but can you tell us more in depth about uh, who you're targeting and what's your specialty? Sure. So the same thing, again, I'm just going to talk in terms of St. Louis guys. Um, so the St. Louis, um, our group is 40% contract business, 30% spot business and 30% expedite. So when I talk in terms of contract or spot, those are the pricing models. Okay. Mm -hmm. Within those, we have van, reefer, flatbed, um, over-dimensional, and we have multiple different equipment types within those pricing structures. So 40% contractual, 30% spot, 30% expedite. Okay. Um, so one of the things that has been great for us um, is um, how diverse we are within our business blend, our business mix. When COVID hit in 2019, we had multiple customers, we had multiple industries that we had shut completely down. During those, during that that downturn, we didn't lay off one employee. We never stopped any of our compensation plans, any of our incentive plans. We never stopped matching any 401ks. And it's because of how diverse we are and how diverse we were as an organization from customers, customer sizes, industries, verticals, um, and, 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 and our business blend and mix is what kept us going through COVID. It's like, like hedging your bets stocks. or yes, investing in stocks. Uh, I was going to say that that's what they say to hedge yeah, your bets. Too. You know, if one sector went down, we'll just shift them over. You know, 
We're not doing as many projects. No one's building no. projects. We'll put them over to more, you know, um, spot rate. So what's good right now? What what what's like the the, the product, the commodity, or what is it? I know obviously spots uh, in the worst market right now. Uh, contracts doing better than spot. Um, well, I would I would say what's a good equipment to run right now? Is yeah. it drive in? Is it reefer? Is it then, ex expedited? What do you guys see on your we, side? We we had a question from a follower asking about the expedited business. So if you could tell us how the expedited business is going doing right now as well. Yeah. So um, our expedite um, team is as busy as they've ever been. Um, we have a team dedicated to our expedite customers. And they operate in multiple different equipment types within that expedite program. Um, as far as some of the other segments are going, I'll give you guys kind of like a, my opinion on where the freight market is in general. Um, is that customers are going through RFPs right now, um, and so it, the first what are they sorry, sorry what are they going to RF what is that RFP is a request for pricing. So oh, okay. these right. shippers will, will hold RFPs or they will invite carriers and brokers to their RFP, which is their request for, for pricing program. And then they will award business to the broker, to the carrier by lowest rates or by relationships or things of that nature, right? So this is RFP season. So a lot of the major shippers and most shippers will, will, will start the year with an RFP. When we talk about tender volumes and tender rejections or acceptance, some of these large shippers are still paying rates from 2022. So that's why the contract rates are higher than spot rates is because mm -hmm. they're yeah. still paying 2022 contract rates yeah. and the 2022 spot rates have fallen through the floor. Mm -hmm. So there are very little tenders to reject or a, a truckload carrier will reject a tender because his rates are still from 2022 market levels. So there's less spot volume, but what's about to happen as we go through the RFPs season is that these contract rates, contract carriers are having to drop their rates to now spot, spot market level rates, okay? So once that happens, truckload carriers are dropping their rates. There's now more of an equilibrium between the spot and contract basis. Now, you will start to see truckload carriers contracts, they will start to reject those rates because now they don't like the rates that they had to submit, which will then lead more to more spot freight. Hope that made any sense. Yeah, I, I get that. It does. Yeah, because I I mean, I, I read all the news and I, I get it. I kind of like dive into that topic a lot. So yeah, it totally makes sense. Um, and I, I'm glad that you uh, brought that up, Justin, and I'm, you explained yeah, that. Yeah, for well. sure, because I, I kind of that's that's very interesting. I never heard of that, to be honest. But it makes so much sense, though. So everybody that was locked in, well, now they're going to be back, and now you have like a bidding, kind of like a bidding war, almost, right? Yeah. So, so, so like, whoever kind of, if you look at some of your invoices or rate cons from March of last year, you're probably making. You know, if the lane paying a thousand now, you're making two thousand on it last year. Uh, at this yeah, time, yeah. Well, that carrier that has that contract for two thousand, he's going to take every single one of those right now. But when he has to bid it for for this year, he's not going to get away with two thousand. I know I would go in, you know, close to ten fifty or eleven at the market right now. Yeah. And then win that load. Say it's a holiday. Say there's bad weather. Say now I can't find a carrier at eleven. Now I'm, you know, I'm going to try to move it, you know, because for the customer. But if you know another person might give it back and that's how the spot market gets you know busier right now it, it's dead makes forever. sense sure yeah uh justin you mentioned that the expedited market is better than ever before uh can i know about better than ever before okay uh, okay but you didn't say that so sorry okay <laughs> we, are, we are still we are still busy uh okay doing well got um, it it's not it's not what it was, but our customers are keeping our, our team busy. Okay. Uh, and when you say expedited, that's anything that requires what team drivers or a sprinter van. Like, can you tell me, explain exactly what expedited entails? Sure. Well, first of all, my team will handle some team drivers, you know, but mine are more full truckload vans. The expedited team that he's going to get into is mostly just the smaller equipment or. Okay. They are, they're line shut down production loads um, where okay. customers call and say, hey, man, we need you to put six drivers in the truck and get it there yesterday. 
that's a joke, guys. Yeah, feel free to watch that one. Uh, <laughs> but hey, I'll yeah. do it. I'll do it if the price is right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go there myself. I'll pull a strong solo Sergey for you. <laughs> when we say an expedite, it's it's anything that requires a direct delivery or team service in any, in any of the four or five equipment type sizes: van, sprinter van. Small, straight, large, straight, tractor, trailer, team deliveries, d- direct deliveries, um, team drivers. Yeah, yeah I got a friend that has ex- expedited business, and it's completely different than what we deal with. I feel like it's even way more stressful than ours because oh, – um, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, they get the macro points sent to them every 15 minutes. If our yeah. driver takes an unscheduled piss, we're getting a call. Hey, this guy – this guy already took his yep. break. Why do you why do you stop here? And you know, we had exactly. Wow. So, exactly. You're, and the, the the thing is you gotta find drivers that will that will not care about that or that actually are responsible. You know what I'm saying? And it's I think it's really, really tough to do that to actually find like um because when you're driving, you don't like being in, not annoyed, but you don't like, you know, the brokers always, I mean, we've all heard of TQL, you know, blowing up brokers 50 times in a day and you're driving. Sometimes you could be stuck in traffic. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. So nobody likes that. So I can imagine on the expedited stuff where it's like, you got to get this, like you said, you know, you, this got to be here yesterday, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. But at that same time, don't, you know, don't tell me you have an expedite or that, you know, there's traffic and everything, but don't tell me that you your tire blew out at midnight and then all of a sudden it got fixed exactly at 10 o'clock, right? When a normal person would take their 10 hour break and sleep, you know, don't tell me, yeah. oh, it's a team, but we just broke down during these times and now we're, of we're up again. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's high risk, high reward guys. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about it. Um, it, it there is a, a high level of urgency to it. Um, but we've got teams that are 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, setting expectations, communicating with drivers, communicating with customers. Um, if if you don't have that structure and that foundation set up, um, you yeah. will get burned. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I believe it. Yeah. Uh, what kind of sales tips would you guys give to anyone that's looking to get, like, get in the door with a shipper? The best thing that I can tell people Um if one of them is this guy's great at it. Um, is honor your commitments, guys. Um, we have a lot of, of of kind of new brokers, or you hear people coming into the industry um, that will give themselves a bad name or a bad reputation quick. And word travels. Um, if you honor your commitments, customers they look for reliability at a fair competitive cost a lot of the, the shippers and a lot of the a lot of the valuable customers out there are not always looking for bottom dollar costs they're looking for yeah. reliability good communication at a fair price they're not looking for for us to not be successful they don't they don't want their partners to go out of business they don't want their partners to not make money that's not what most good valuable customers are um but if you get an opportunity, on your commitments, guys. The fastest way to get kicked out of a of a good shippers program is by backing out on your commitment and leaving them high and dry last minute. And the same goes for carriers and when it, in regards to brokers. So. Absolutely, nothing makes me more you know pissed off than like I try to set up a new carrier. I grab the load for them. We're going to get set up. I get the load. Hey, we're good to go. He's like, oh, sorry, I already booked my load or truck. I was like, all right, well, I don't, I just grabbed this shipment for you. We, we had a good thing going here. What yeah. happened? Sure. See, but most of the time it works the other way around. Yeah, <laughs> we're, waiting for, <laughs> we're waiting for the brokers. We're like, please send this load over. Let me fill this packet out. Depends on the market. Because Right. We fill yeah. this packet out. We're waiting there praying to God, like that this load gets transferred over to us, you know? I mean, this time last year, um, Bob, we're the ones doing the praying that that truck's still available. Exactly, right exactly. Right this yeah. Year, again, <laughs> it, 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 if you, if you have people that want to, to work with each other and who who run an ethical, um, honest organization, those are those are like those are the people that Bob, you are valuable to us, and I hope at some point in time you can say that we're valuable to you because we work yeah. together, and we're honest with each other. 
That's that's yeah. all what that's all we're here to do, man. Like, yeah. like yeah. This. if we're talking about a load and you want fifteen hundred, and I said, let me talk to the shipper, I'll give you a call back. How many times do you actually get called back if it's not a no go? Not a lot. Yeah. So our guys are actually calling you back. Say, hey, Bob, 1500 didn't get it. I assume you to hold your truck. Now, there's a good chance you've already covered your truck elsewhere. Yeah. At least I Wait, so just so I can get this clear, uh, Scott, you're saying that you make sure that everyone in your carrier sales team calls back a truck. Is that like part of the training protocol or part of an operations I'm not manual? Saying we do it every time. Okay. If, okay. If Bob's telling me he's holding the truck for me and yeah. I don't call him back when it's a no go, then what's making him yeah. next time talk? There's no integrity that he's going to sure. hold his truck. And I can't. hundred percent. I can't expect you to hold your truck if I'm not going to give you the results when it's not a good one. Yeah. And believe it or not, this actually goes a long way because, like you guys said, so last year, right, we kind of had the upper hand. That, well, the carriers kind of did, and carriers will remember. People, I know people Same that have 250 trucks. No, I know, but I know carriers that have 250 trucks and they don't work with big brokerage because, you know, they do certain things or they don't have integrity or they, you know, they don't follow up. Like right now, there's a lot of brokers that we had a driver, you know, um, they canceled the load on us on a Friday night, Friday night. We had to lay him over till Monday. We never even got a tonal, you know, like the, 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 the broker was just like, no, we're not going to send it to you. And, and I, I want to, I, I would blast this company, but they're, they're way, they're too big. So I don't even want to say it, but like, you know, you will remember this. And I feel like I'm not saying that we'll do this, but like, once it goes up, that's when carriers are like, well, why would I go with, with this broker now when I can just get a same load with somebody else, you know, and this broker kind of didn't screw, like didn't screw me over back then. So, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, we're, we're all doing the same things to each other during the different markets. But yeah. one of the things that that Sunset really wants to pride itself on, guys, is our core values. We 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 live them. Um, they're important to us. Um, and 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 one of our core values is is accountable. Um, we want to be accountable to the decisions that we make and to the promises that we make. And that's calling guys back and telling them, hey, this didn't work out. That's calling them back and saying, hey, I know that that this was a bad deal for you, but we're going to pay you your accessorials out of our pocket because we are accountable to the decisions um, that, that we make. And we understand that if, if something bad, if something bad happens, we have to go out there and fight for what's right. Sometimes it's our customer. Yeah. that's right. Sometimes it's the carrier that's right. Sometimes it's us. That's right. But at the end of the day, we're there to represent all three parties and we need to make sure that everybody comes out of that transaction, that, that transaction successful. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, no, and it's and it's like, uh, and I definitely agree with that. And I think a lot of carriers don't understand that because I feel like there's a lot of carriers or owner operators that think the brokers are just out there to get them, but they don't understand that that you know the brokers are there literally to have the relationship with the shipper to do the stuff for you. You know, so it makes your life easier. But a lot, of, I feel like a lot of carriers don't understand that. And I think right now, why a lot of them are kind of pissed off or whatever, but you know, it's just it's a bad market for, and I feel like it's for everybody, you know, everybody's like kind of losing money right now. And, you know, a year ago, everybody was killing it and making money. So everybody's just yeah. like, and you well, know, I, trying to find somebody to blame, you know, that's sure. literally what it is. Yeah. And I'm to, that, to that exact point, Bob, that's, that's a great point is that brokers don't set the price for the market. Neither do yeah. carriers, neither do shippers. We all need each other. And it's just general economic principles, man. It's supply and yep. demand that's that's, exactly. that, that's set market rates. And we're out there fighting and scratching and clawing just like the carriers are, just like every other broker is. When 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 the demand is down and the supply is up, costs are down. When the when when the flip side of that happens, prices go up. Um yeah. when there's more competition than there is demand. Then prices go down. Unfortunately, that's just the that's that's just the economic principles that happen. So we're not out here setting price points. We're just living by the market, just that 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 every single other transportation provider is. Sure. Yeah. Carriers will be like, hey, why don't you why why don't you quote that higher? And I can say, because I won't have the load. If I don't do it, the next no. guy will. If you exactly your driver is the same way. Why can't you get a little bit more on the slope? Because it wouldn't be my load if if I if I quoted that. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. And we're just coming off from a market which was, you know, probably the hottest 
the hottest market we've ever been to, we've ever experienced. And that obviously caused a lot of trucking companies to open up. And so like now, especially with the downturn, it's, you know, a lot of trucking companies that just started their operation weren't really knowledgeable on the market or the industry. They just were like, oh, you know, they they heard their uncle or their friend was making a ton of money in exactly. the trucking, got a CDL, exactly. got in the truck. And like yep. now they're like learning the hard way what it means, you know, when the market actually makes has a downturn. Mm-hmm. Got a truck for two hundred and fifty thousand. Got a trailer for seventy grand. They're like, "Yo, I'm out here. I'm I'm, I'm about to make a killing," you yeah. know. And next thing you know, the market shifts, the market changes. Because that's what I noticed. Like in trucking, I mean, I've been in it for nine years, and it's just a up and down. You know, every two three years, it's a up and down, and you just gotta learn how to ride ride the wave. I guess you know. So, yeah. and the yeah. thing with us, since we've been growing so quickly, we have a lot of new people in in our. Um, operation that this is the first time, you know, they started in 2019, 2020. It was, you know, you had customers lined up trying to give you freight and they didn't have to be aggressive. You know, they, they were turning down loads because they had right. there trucks out there and there's 15, 20 loads to pick from. Mm-hmm. Now we have to you know, go from being on defense to be on offense. What are we going to do to to get the load? You know, the customer is going to yeah. give the food to whoever's, on top of their mind, whether it be because of good service or because I'm, you know, almost annoying because I'm calling you at eight, 12 and four every day, trying to see what you're working on. So yeah. um, trying to teach that offense, um, offensive mindset is been a struggle, not a struggle, but it's a, it's a learning curve that, you know, because you guys have been in the industry, you know, that it's, it's, it's like this every two or three years. It goes yeah. the um, the new guys don't realize that yet. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so you, you guys are really process oriented, which is obviously smart. Uh, you're building the business in a way that um, I don't know. You, you you're tracking uh, numbers. You you kind of see, you know, like because like I, I own a small business, Bob owns a small business, and we're kind of learning the ropes, ins and outs. And you know, t- today I spent half my day creating an SOP, so uh, which is a standard order of a procedure. Bob, I'm not sure if you've done those before, but uh, I've been reading the E Myth. Uh, which I have my book somewhere here. Yeah, uh, yeah, shout yeah. Out very to, good book. Very good yeah. book. We read it with our bank, actually. And, and I do, yeah. yeah. Here it is. Well, I was actually was going to ask if, if you guys read this book or something along those lines to create these processes that you have in place or how did you go about, like, you know, um, as you're scaling, yeah, like, how were you able to scale effectively, especially since, just to bring up the point that you do have amazing Google reviews, so not only do your customers love you, but also uh, the carriers too, which is, you know, difficult I was to find. Surprised. Yeah, I, w- I was literally surprised today because my coworker literally said, they're like, oh, they're actually pretty good. And usually right now you don't hear that for uh, for the brokerage side, you know? Yeah. So I was actually surprised because we literally booked the load with you guys last week. So yeah. Oh, that's the best compliment that you could give us. They're actually pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that actually that's goes. A review. That's, a, that's, that's a six star review as far as they're concerned. It is. Uh, but again, guys, it's like we, we treat our employees the way we feel they sh- they should be treated. We treat our carriers the way that we feel they should be treated. We treat our customers in the same manner. If we do what's right for those three entities and for those three parties from a leadership perspective, our employees will take care of our customers. Our employees will take care of our carriers. It's our job as leaders to take care of our employees and then they will take care of the rest. So, Justin, um, can you like have you read like some books that you've that helped you kind of like put a process in place, a system in place? Um, can you tell? I know like your personality, is, I could tell that is more of like a kind of a perfectionist, and you're 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 a strong leader, and you you, you know you get stuff done. You know, no no BS kind of person, and I respect that. I'm kind of more a little bit laid back, but I I, I tend to sometimes try to work on you know being more. Uh, articulate and more like a better leader. So I'm wondering if you've had any books that you've read uh, throughout the years that have really stuck out to you that have helped you in this process. And if not, like can you maybe tell us more about the leadership um, from, you know, even the CEO level, because I know there's, I think, Lindsay um, at, at Sunset. Can you tell us more about that and just more or less that whole overall kind of like outlook? Yeah. So um, the first one is, as far as the books are concerned, 
Um, every member of Sunset has read a book called Raven Fans. Um, Raven Fans? Raven Fans, yes. And it's By who? a book about um, customer success and customer service um, and essentially turning all of your customers into raving fans, ones that will promote you and ones that will refer you based off of the way that you treat them and the way that you service and treat their business. So that's that's one that the organization reads. Um, another book that I've read myself, um, Dr. Is, Seuss. not Dr. Seuss, that is a good one. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a book called Extreme Ownership. Okay, um, I've heard of that one. A guy named Jocko Willink, I think mm -hmm. is his name. Um, he's an ex Navy SEAL, one of the baddest motherfuckers on the planet. So. I was listening to this podcast with um, the Huberman podcast with, like a week ago. Yeah. With Steve, uh, right? Steve said the same book, I think. Uh, Steve, uh, yeah, I think last I podcast think he, we did, he said so. the same book. Yeah, yeah, extreme yep. ownership. Yeah, but that's that's a really good one. Um, and so it, I'll talk about the COO real quick. Um, and his name is Nick McGrory. Um, he is been my mentor since the time that that I've I've been at Sunset. Um, he is a bit of an old school, hard nosed guys guy himself. Um, no real BS. He likes to laugh and joke and have a good time. Um, but as far as the business is concerned, we're just very serious here, guys. Um, you know, as we get to laugh and joke and have a good time when we're winning, but when we yeah. are not. Winning, we are not laughing. We're not joking. We're, we're, we are figuring out how to win. We are just extreme competitors at its foundation. And that starts with not only Lindsay and her dad and, and, and the way that Jim Williams ran the business and taught Lindsay how to lead, but the way that, that Mick has also helped teach the younger generation and set the expectations of the younger generations. Um, we are a, a highly mentorship censored organization. Um, and meaning I, Nick is my mentor. I've got a couple of men, uh, mentees that, that, that I work with here. I work extremely closely with Scott, even though I was in his ass last week. Um, that's just, <laughs> that's just the way that it, it, it happens. Um, here guys, everybody wants to help and support and protect each other. That's just from the top down, the relationships and the mentality that we have. You Man, you motivated are... me so much. I'm going to be like, yo, can I get a job? Can I go work for you guys or what? <laughs> but I was gonna be like, like, I'm quitting my that. I'm quitting yeah. my trucking company and I'm going to go work for you guys. <laughs> you guys want oh, hardball? He always quotes hardball. Uh, or he's like, you hear the sound of money ball. Uh, money ball, not yeah. hardball. <laughs> See, I, it's clearly not my quote. Yeah, so there's a movie called Moneyball with Brad Pitt. Sure. Uh, they talk about the Oakland A's and um, they, they just lost like 10 or 11 games in a row. And one of the Giambi brothers, the one who's not very good, um, is dancing around on the table. There's music playing. Everybody's laughing, joking, having a good time. And Brad Pitt, Billy Bean, walks by and, and comes in the locker room, throwing coolers, breaking bats. Everybody gets dead quiet. And he goes, guys, this is what losing sounds like. That's the same mentality that's the same comparison that i have to winning and losing when we're winning guys we get to laugh and joke and have a good time with each other but when we're losing yeah. we strap it the fuck on and we go figure it the fuck out you yeah. pardon my language yeah that's like, like january that. and uh february uh sunset is okay. the whole <laughs> like all right guys it's, what, what are we gonna do who are we um I, yeah I, I, I see adversity doesn't build character it reveals it and who are we? Are we the are we the guys that are successful regardless of all else? Or are we going to let the market dictate our success and the money that we bring home to our families? I I, I know I'm not. Wow. Yeah. What a poll. Dang, no I feel like if I was you, man, I would already have like two fifty two hundred and fifty trucks or something. I gotta be motivated <laughs> like that. I need a mentor. Honestly, I <laughs> really do. <laughs> yeah. Wow. No, that's good. I like I like that a lot. Uh, yeah, hmm. Hmm. but that makes a lot of sense, though. You definitely have to be way more focused and, and get it done, you know, especially right now. It's not the time, even from the carrier side, it's not the time to, you know, just relax and chill. You got to do things that other carriers are not willing to do. You got to show up early to work, you got to book loads before, you know, before anybody else. You got to work 
after hours. You know, I, I feel like you got to go above and beyond just to like, you know, make it happen. So you, then, you definitely got a good point. Yeah. You know, we talk about controlling things that we can control, man. You know, there are yeah. so many environmental factors right now that are outside of our control. But what can we yeah. control? How hard we work, the way we treat our employees, um, the intensity in which we come and work, the sense of urgency in which we have here, and just the, the continuous improvement mentality. I mean, it's 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 about your mindset, man. Are 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 you going to be the guy um, that that okay is good enough for you? It's not for me, and it's not for this guy, and it's not for every other member of the organization. And that type yeah. of mentality is not for everybody. Um, but that's why the hiring process takes a little bit longer. We spend a lot of time on candidates up front, um, and we want to make sure that we've got the the, the, the right staff, man. Because when 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 it's go time, we don't stop until we're successful. And speaking on that, so like the same way, like I okay is not good enough. You know, if there's a spot load out there for a thousand dollars, market could be eleven. But someone's bidding that a thousand dollars. If I know it's a broker, if he can do it, you know, my mentality is I can do it too. Whatever they're doing, whether they're maybe you can fit on a smaller unit, maybe they're you know there's another load out there. The, the shipper let us combine it, but there's something. He's not smarter than me. He's just doing something that I haven't thought of. Yet. Yeah, like yeah. I, I don't like losing in, in that aspect. So um, a lot of people get discouraged. You know, the prices sure. are too cheap. I'm just trying to find out how they're doing it and then be better though. Definitely, and you know, like one of the main things that I wanted to get out of this podcast, which we, you know, definitely got out was like, why does Sunset have such high Google reviews? And it really boils down to like the leadership, the values and the systems that you've put in place to, you know, create that. And what's what's interesting for me is because, you know, a lot of trucking companies have somewhat of like a negative view on brokerages, which I completely get because if, like, I'm going to tell you like my backstory, when I got first hired in my, the brokerage I used to work for in the Chicago suburbs, we had a 2020 rule where this was back in uh, 2015, 2016. So the market was pretty bad and it was a 2020 rule. And it was like, if you book at the max rate that's in the TMS, you have to put that load on hold for 20 minutes. And if someone underbids you or finds a cheaper truck by $20, it was a 2020 rule that you have 20 minutes to find a $20 cheaper truck, the other person takes the load. And that's the way I was trained. And I quit, I quit that company after a year. So just to give, give people's perspectives on like how other brokerages operate, like there's obviously good brokerages out there just like Sunset, but there's a ton of, you know, crappy brokerages that, you know, since you're on the phone, like if you don't have the right values in place or the right systems in place, that's, that's where this negative connotation or negative views from carriers comes from. Cause like, that's, that's the way a lot of carriers get treated. But and it's good to see that sunset's not like that. So you know, kudos to you guys for yeah. uh, for being the that. First way. brokerage. I was in college. I was an intern. The first brokerage, we would pick. They would have us build loads. You know, uh, like multi. You know, pick up point A, drop off like Houston to Kansas City, Kansas City to wherever, uh, California. And we're like, I don't have a load from Houston, California. But I've got oh, this wow. load. And then when they get to Kansas City, they'd say. Oh, the, the, the Kansas City, the California load, um, you know, the, that load got canceled. Sorry. And they yeah. get <laughs> loads covered for, you know, areas that don't even want to be in. Well, yeah. you guys are, there's, I think there's a, there's horror stories for, for, for all of these other companies and their reputations might be what they are because of, of, of that being who they are. Our mentality, yeah. uh, Paul, is, as you talk about the 2020 rule, um, we don't fight over $20. I tell my team to go get more loads. And that's what we can control. Guys, like it's our job to hire the most qualified carrier at a competitive price. And we're not squawking over 25 bucks. We're not, we, I mean, we, we may negotiate hard from time to time, but at the end of the day, internally, go get more business, guys. S stop wasting around and, tr and, 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 and nickels holding up a dime. Go get more business. It's a multi-billion dollar a year industry. And we're all yeah. just trying to cut each other's throats for 20 bucks. Yeah. Don't get one business. And if and if yeah. one bad account manager or one bad 
you know, driver or, or something can ruin a uh, relationship between two companies uh, on one load. If I, yeah. you know, screw over one of your drivers, Bob, you don't want to ever work with me again. And I don't yeah. know how much money I'm losing down the road because I wanted to, you know, screw Bob out of attention for two hours. Is that 70, yeah. 80 bucks really going to, is that okay. worth it? Yeah, if it's really worth it. And I say the same thing actually towards the broker side, to be honest, because I say the same thing. I know a lot of carriers will, you know, start flipping. You know how many messages I get on Instagram? People are like, can you blast this broker? Can you do this? He cut me out on detention. He did this. And I'm like, what do you, well, what is that really going to solve? It's a, I get it. It's 150. Just take your losses, you know, move on and, and you have a safe life. What am I going to blast this broker, you know, for $150 because he didn't pay you a ton or he didn't, it doesn't make any sense. I'm, I literally have the same, I like kind of what you're saying, you know, it, it why waste your time on that when you could just move on? And then, but you do remember, because I feel like carriers do remember where they like, hey, I won't really work with this guy because he screwed me over before, you know? So I'm, I'm kind of the same way from the carrier side where it's like, okay, if a broker wants to go this way, that's fine. I'll tell him to have a nice day. We'll move on. We'll find somebody else. You know, we'll find a different load to, to move on with. You know, I will pay my driver the layover fees. I will pay him everything over the weekend, but that's fine if we don't get a tone. You know, I'll take my losses and then just move on. But I will remember because next time if he needs help moving the load, and I'll be like, hey, just find somebody else. You know, find a guy that, you know, has an old old truck and a not responsible driver. So, yep. And then this is a massive industry, but it's amazing how small it is. You know, how many people... Yeah. Worked it somewhere else. So you screw someone over today, and that's the last time I'm um, dealing with him. And then two years later, you're dealing with the guy again, and you have no idea. Um, <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, guys, uh, we're kind of r- running up on time here, but I think we we honestly have lots of great content, great conversation. Uh, thank you guys. Can so we much ask for- some of these questions? Oh, yo, I mean, I know you guys have to go to dinner. So if you have a few more minutes, uh, Bob, you want to hit it with the questions? You want to just I don't know if you guys quick? can answer some. Of, yeah, I don't know if you guys can answer some of these questions. But one of the main ones, I've had a bunch of these people were like, what's the average profit margin that you guys see from your side? Is it 50% is what we're saying? I no. don't think it is, but a lot of carriers believe that, yeah. you know, and. Guys, it's dramatically, it, it's, it's, it's not. Um Specifically at Sunset, I, I assure you guys, we are running an in, 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 in honest ethical business. Um, the one number that I probably will say out loud is that our average revenue per order is down 10% year over year. So that's not margin. When we talk about revenue, that's collected dollars. Okay. So mm-hmm. when we say that's down 10% year over year, that shows you that market pricing is down 10% year over year. So when we talk about the softness of it, that's the direct tie to the feelings of the prices that we're putting in our pocket. It's 10% less year over year. Is that because you guys are paying more to the carriers or is it just because the whole market is down? It's because of the market balance. Um, And so we have some customers that we would call a cost plus customer. Um, So when you think about X percentage on top of, $1,500 $1,500 to the carrier versus X percentage on top of $1,200 to the carrier. Since the business has decreased that much year over year, there's less money for us at that cost plus level. Makes sense. So about 10, 15%, 20%. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get it, man. You cut out. No, he's joking. You say you couldn't hear him. Sorry. <laughs> 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 um no there's there's other ones do you guys still have a couple minutes or no? i mean or we, yeah. we can move on um what's the best gifts or do you guys send gifts to your customers and what's the best gift that you guys send to your customer like the shipper do you guys do that or no to create a better relationship i like instead of actually sending a gift sometimes we'll send gifts but i like actually going to visit them you know that's something yeah. that a lot of these people haven't done again since 2019 covid you, you, everything was zoom calls but you know Five, 10 years ago, you went and visited all your customers, you know, and I feel like yeah. every time you visit them in person, you find a new lane, you find a new mode, um, a, a new warehouse they're building. So I like to take my customers on, you know, to a game or out to, um, you know, dinner when we have conferences and stuff like that. Um, yeah, okay. it's, it's, I, I think as, as, as small growing companies, um, 
I've I've kind of heard or kind of read some articles about not maybe wasting your time on swag or things with your own company logos on them until you find yourself at a certain point. Face-to-face -face business interactions are going to gain you so much more credibility and relationships than a hat that says Bob's trucking on it. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah. We have so like so no Rolexes for customers or nothing like that. Just more of like face games. Yeah. yeah okay. We heard customers tell us you're the first first broker to ever come out and see us. Oh wow. Ever. And yeah. that when we come back from there, I know who uh, Dawn's two sons and daughters are, man. The, mm -hmm. the the strength that you have from that relationship and from that interaction. Um, I'd say nine times out of 10 is, is going to far surpass the investment that you spent to go see them. And now let me, let me flip it on, on this side. Would you, I mean, from a carriers, have you ever had carriers visit you guys and be like, Hey, absolutely. can you give you us some dedicated one. lanes? If you guys yeah. are ever in St. Louis, I welcome both of you guys to stop by our office. You guys are welcome here at any time. We would love a hundred percent. I will. We would <laughs> love to meet you guys, show you guys the office um and 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 show you and introduce you to the team um we awesome. actually we actually run what we call um core carrier yeah okay. our core carrier program um uh -huh. and we get together with our core carriers quarterly usually to go over uh -huh. and have a full business review with them to understand what's going on in the market, to understand what their pain points are, to understand how we can possibly be a better partner. We are actively having those, the, the, those business reviews with our carriers. Sometimes they're here in the office. Sometimes we'll go see, we'll go see them too. That's um, awesome. That's we, so good to hear actually. Yeah. We really truly believe in strengthening relationships through face-to-face -face interactions. We have carriers that, you know, Hey, you guys aren't currently handling this business, but I hate this broker, but I love this lane. Here's where I picked up from. Here's where it's going. You should go target them because I'd rather work with you. They're doing the selling for us just because our yeah. partners are so, so strong. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Um, cool. Um, I have another one. How can AI change brokerage? Are you guys looking into that? I know everybody's doing, you know, the chat, AIs, all this stuff. Are you guys looking into that or no? Yeah, so um, portions of um, what uh, of some of the things that I had said earlier in this conversation will be derived from the the uh, the questions that that we got from you guys. So the portion of AI that I truly think um, it, 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 that we utilize at Sunset, we invest heavily in technology. But our people, at the end of the day, who if are they, they are not yeah. trained and are they are not they are not on the front lines and they do not have to do they do not know how to do the work ethically and honestly, there is no level of of, of AI that is going to support your people. This organization, we believe yeah. that technology supports the people. Technology is a way of the future. If you are not investing in it and if you are not trying to understand it and understand how it can benefit your business, you are missing an opportunity. But technology, in my opinion, is not going to replace good qualified talent. And I think 100%. I'm not trying to throw, you know, Uber under the bus, but you know, they have the, you know, their preset days and they have, you know, this it's 2900 on Thursday, the rates 2800 on Friday and you know, some yeah. customers like the fact that they can just click and they know the rate. But our customers take those prices and say, hey, Uber's at 29. Can you do three grand? They, they like that to get the market, but they still want to deal with it. They still know. Exactly. And that's the com that's the company I kind of mentioned first, but I didn't want to say the name. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. Because sometimes you try to reach out to somebody and it's taking you <laughs> hours, you know, to find somebody normal to talk to. Yeah. They'll clip it out. Because it's like, it's, there's certain, like when we talk about understanding our customers, if you treat every customer like they're the same, that's the fastest way to get kicked out of the program. We yeah. treat customers like they want to be treated. How do they want us to operate their business? What communication do they want from us? What reporting do they want from us? What 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 business review cadence do they want from us? We don't have a cookie cutter approach 
to customers. We understand what our customers want and we fit our process and structures to their needs. Um, and that's okay. another metric that we look at week over week. Because if we're posting too many loads, it means we're not working our relationships properly. So that is another KPI that we use to make sure that our carrier sales reps are not taking easy ways out and are making sure that we are going and having difficult discussions sometimes. We are making sure that we are, we are, are, are holding all of our partners accountable to maybe a service level issue, a communication issue. Guys, let's not take the easy way out. Let's figure out the best way of doing business. And they, you know, 60% of the time, that has been going directly to our core carrier partners and the relationships that we have. We honestly, we try to keep our loads off the load boards. And, and if wow. they are there, unfortunately, I mean, there's a time when I will post out several loads. I, I'm not normally a, a huge load poster, but and it's not even a live load. I'm trying to find a carrier today that can handle this regularly in two weeks. But I, I got to figure out who's run that lane now so I don't have to post it when it's actually ready to go. So well, we'll if, you have, if, if you ever have anything out of Charlotte, hit me up. <laughs> well, uh, let's, 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 let's exchange some information uh, once, once we yeah. get off call, man, to see if, if, if we can't start utilizing um, your, your network a little bit more. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. And then um, another question we had uh, predictions for 2023, load prices, fuel, demand, supply. What are you guys predicting for this year? Um, so my expectation of things, Scott mentioned it a bit, January and February are the softest times of the year. Customers are going through RFPs right now. March and April are going to be very big predictors or indicators of what's going to come for the rest of the year not trying to get into any political discussions here, um, but the Fed is literally trying to create a recession um, to cool inflation. Yeah. I don't know that it's working that well. I have yet to really see or hear uh, of, of consumer confidence um, not still having the, the, the level of confidence that they did prior to Christmas, prior to last year, because when's the last time you've really heard of, of, of any consumers not still spending money at the same clip that it was? They're not able to do anything with inflation because money is still being spent at the levels that it was previously. That, to me, yeah. means the expectation, the hope, is that the freight market is going to keep back up. I don't know that it's going to be 2022, 2021 levels. I am expecting... Yeah hoping that we are as close to the floor right now as we can get. And then we will rebound as the freight season heats up. Man, I really, 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 really hope you're right. <laughs> so my, my good friend from college is an investment banker in New York. And I had, a, I met him in uh, when I was in New York in the summer and I, I was wanting to get his kind of like input on how he sees, you know, like the, the economic, like kind of like output in, like in the outlook for it. And he was like, back in July of 2022, he was like, right now, everyone still has a ton of cash. Like everyone made a ton of money uh, throughout yeah. the, you know, COVID uh, years, 2021, 2022. And because of that, he told me that he sees like a recession happening towards like the end of 23, like beginning of 24, when people start running out of the money they actually made. So that's just yeah. something I, I thought was pretty interesting. And so you do see yeah. a, still a lot of spending, uh, but go ahead, Justin. Well, it sounds like your friend's much smarter than me, man. Um, so well, <laughs> this guy got a 34 on his ACT. Um, it was kind of funny or no, 35 on his ACT. So it was just like one point from perfect. So yeah, he was, he's one of the smarter guys I know, uh, but he's, he does, he, he buys companies uh, and he works for a private equity firm and he literally, he, he buys companies uh, for them. So like, well, yeah, I mean, uh, Paul, you made me, you made me feel my my uh, my my weight in this conversation here, man. Throwing around those thirty five ACTs, uh, me and me and your boy yeah. aren't even even speaking on the same. The, on the yeah, same first I'm completely below his level. I just want to throw it in there because I thought it was an interesting in, input from him, that, just like that I remembered when I when I met up with him. So well, I do know that a lot of carriers did get like SBA loans, like you know, a million, two million dollar loans. So I, if they do run out, then I feel like it might be, you know, that kind of a thing. But we'll see. I didn't get an SBA loan. I should have got one. I wish I got one, but it's all right. 
when customers always ask, you know, what do you think market's going to do? <laughs> Mick, our COO, says if, if he knew, he, he'd be somewhere else making a lot more money if he could predict the market. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Because all we do know is, you know, it, we're, it's speculation, really, um, you know, <laughs> but we are, we're, we're not thinking that, that, you know, banks still seem relatively strong. Consumer spending still seems strong. Um, there are still investments happening. And yeah, maybe to your point, Paul, maybe, you know, 2023, the end of 2023 is a different look. Um, I have heard people call over what's happened the last six months of rolling recession is that industries are not being hit at the same time. So most recessions hit all industries and sectors at once. That's when it's so catastrophic. But when it hits, okay. hits industries at different times or different levels, it's rolling as opposed to it hitting all at one time. So mm. I, I don't know if that's maybe, again, the ec economics, um, you know, are, 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 are much smarter than me. Um, but still, I, I think that there is something to be said or something to be looked at for how different seg sectors are, are are being hit at different performing. Times. Yeah, sure. that makes sense. Yeah, Perfect. and then uh, I guess a, a last question. Well, I have a bunch of these, but this is the last one I'm going to ask because I, I know we've we've taken probably way too much of your time already. But um, this is from a carrier side, I guess again. But where are the good loads paying which lanes? And like I, I would add to that, would like what do you see the most paying more like better paying ones like reefers, dry vans, you know, flatbeds? If you guys do any flatbeds, or or what, what do you see? Where, where's like the hot market right now? Or what do you guys see? I would say as far as time of day. I don't know. I, I'll get in the market, but time of day, if you get in there early, literally five, six a.m., you're gonna get you know the the carrier or the the broker who missed yesterday's load that they just need the first truck available. Um, and oh, then wow. the, assets, the the large assets come in the play. You know, the JB Hunch, the Schneiders, the Swifts, they come in at you know eight a.m. and they're gonna suck up all that spot capacity during the middle of the day, and then in the afternoon, once they all their trucks are full. That's when it kind of opens up again for for the higher paying loads, you know, two, three, and on because all the the large companies ha have their loads for the day. Um, as far as modes, um, we're about to approach on you know flatbed season in the summer. Um, reefers were were really good in the winter because it's protect from freeze. We're kind of moving out of that season now. Um, uh -huh. I, I I hate to say it, but I don't think anything's extremely hot. Anywhere, yeah. if there was, there'd be a lot more people there. Um, My yeah. opinion, guys, is that it's not specifically lane specific. Um, the more specialized the equipment, over dimensional flatbeds, um, expedite loads. Again, things that that there's less supply in because of of the fact that it's more specialized in network. Um, but also. The spot market right now is just really tough. So if you have yeah. small carriers, they're operating predominantly off of spot, only really spot transactional loads. It's feast or famine, guys. You're gonna you're gonna have good times and you're gonna have bad. Um, yeah, I've never run an in, in a trucking company. I've never run an asset based company. But what I know from my experience is, I believe diversifications of networks. Um, understanding that sometimes contractual business is better than transactional business. It might not pay as much, but it should be easier. Um, you should have better relationships. You're not burning as many calories trying to find loads. There is some, some, some overhead and resource expense there that you can save from a guaranteed load for that truck. Finding good networks, finding good brokers to work with. That's all yeah. my opinion or advice as opposed to, hey, hit Laredo, Texas right now. Mm -hmm. Guys, it's yeah. more it's more than than that in this current market. Yeah, that's that makes total sense. And I think that's where our company needs to pivot because we're definitely like really, really spot, you know, and that's what we kind of how we grew. But now we're getting a little bit bigger and it's harder and harder to cover certain trucks. And I think this is where we need to refocus and start focusing more on like dedicated stuff more on stuff like maybe 
you know, trying to make, like you said, burning less calories, you know, there's just taking that load, maybe making a little bit less on it and then just, just keep it moving, you know, and having a consistent lane. The sucky part is like trying to find something like that right now. I mean, we get stuff all the time where people will, well, brokers will reach out and they're like, Hey, can you run this load? And it's a dollar and 87 cents per mile, right? All in cost. And I'm like, it literally cost me two twenty to run my check, uh, to run my truck, or two forty. Depends on the driver how much he's getting paid or what we're paying for fuel. I'm like, I would love to take this for you. This lane is amazing for me, you know, but the price is just not there. If I run it, I'm just running myself bankrupt, you know. So that yeah. that's where the the battle's coming in. And that is the, the the best way I can I, I can maybe describe my my thought toward that, Bob. Is that um, everybody wants insurance? when they're sick you buy insurance when you're healthy and it and, and maybe you know it's it's very very hard to find what everybody wants now because of the competition but tactically if it's something that you guys are interested in and maybe partnering with us or working with us to see if we can get you on some of that contractual business yeah it's 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 all about timing specifically man and it's a very very difficult time right now for spot yeah. based carriers to enter into the contractual market 100 percent. awesome yeah. awesome i appreciate that yeah and we'll definitely reach out and touch after that yeah cool well, well we really appreciate you guys time yeah thank uh, you that was awesome no i mean we appreciate yours time. I know you guys are working probably hard, extra hard. I mean, we're all working extra hard. I'm working extra hard too. But yeah, this would this was great. Um, definitely good to meet you guys. Yeah, and hopefully definitely. we can create a relationship. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in to the Daily Freight Caviar Podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, or if you didn't, leave a review. Let me know what you think. I appreciate any feedback. If you'd like to have more Freight Caviar content, go to freightcaviar.com and subscribe to my email newsletter.